Anyway, this video is about the Diamond VTX and some tips on getting some better results out of this uh, particular uh, VTX DVR combo. And there's been issues out there, and I posted something on Facebook with some tips. And this video is going to be covering that as well as a few other things. And um, well, first off, this does run pretty hot at, on 200 milliwatts because it has a lot of small components on here. It's very tightly packed, and at 200 milliwatts with the video transmitter running. It's, and the DVR also recording, this thing does get very, very hot. So um, I've been flying it on my Larva X. I've got, an, actually, this is the older Larva X. I have another one. There's some, you know, vents here for air cooling that uh, will keep it cool when you're flying around. But if you're on 200, mil, 200 milliwatts and on the ground and just sitting there, the VTX will get very hot very quickly. And if you're using a canopy that doesn't have good airflow, um, it could overheat and shut down and or uh, damage itself. So yeah, definitely use a canopy that um, has good airflow. And um, if uh, you are going to be sitting there for a while, then you might want to use the low power disarm feature in Betaflight. I will um, link the Betaflight Wiki article about that down in the description. You can turn that on and also put the command up here on the screen. Obviously hit the, put the command in, hit save, and then what will happen is when you are disarmed, it will be transmitting at 25 milliwatts, and when you arm, it will uh, switch the power on the video transmitter to 200 milliwatts while you're flying, and whenever you're disarmed, it'll go back to 25 milliwatts. When you do, when it, when you actually arm, it will do a brief like power switch, and it, depending upon your receiver, it may look like uh, the the video transmitter is shutting down. Then it'll be like that for you know, not too long. Let me like half a second, and then the video will come back. So. Be aware that it's not. That's how. That's actually how the feature works. It's not actually a problem. The um, other thing that people are having problems with is the recording itself. It looks glitchy, and uh, sometimes there's problems um, where the recording doesn't record or is corrupted. Uh, so there's a couple things there that could help. Uh, first, there's the micro SD card. I've been using pretty much only class 10 and above cards, and uh, 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabyte cards. I'll link some cards down below that have been working for me. If you're using a slower card or something too small or old, it may um, actually uh, not be able to record at the proper bitrate because this, this uh, DVR does record at a higher bitrate than most other DVRs out there. It's like around, uh, I think it's around 16 megabits, and I think a lot of other DVRs, onboard DVRs, are around half that, around 8 megabits. That's one of the reasons why you need a uh, better micro SD card. Otherwise, you're going to get some weird glitching or files aren't going to be saved or corrupted. Now as for the recording format itself, it will record I think out of the box in PAL format and it will split the file every two minutes. So and when it is a PAL recording it's 25 frames per second so if you're used to um, editing videos in 30 frames per second it may look like it's glitchy or skipping frames. Um, that is the difference in the frame rate. So you can do a firmware upgrade to change two things. You can go from PAL to NTSC, of course, and also turn off the uh, two-minute file um, file length. So basically it splits the files every two minutes on the default and it records in PAL. You, if you want to keep the, the, uh, the, the two-minute split files, you can do that and just get the firmware for the um, split files for NTSC. Um, but then, you know, some people don't like that where they have to stitch the files together in editing. The, the, the I guess the advantage of that is if you crash and the battery is ejected, then it at least you know you at least save the first couple of minutes, and then you know if you've crashed after that, then you've lost the last uh, portion of it. If you turn off that feature and don't split the files, if you crash and the battery is ejected, you lose the entire uh, session. Uh, you, you have to press the button here. Um, at the end of the session to stop the recording because what will happen is when it's recording the light's flashing and then if you press the button at the end that will stop the recording. It will auto record uh, when you plug in the battery and the red light starts blinking you know it's recording and then you have to uh, press the button to stop the recording and then I'll save the file. That's uh, it's a manual but something a lot of people don't realize they fly and they think that there's Auto saves, but it doesn't, and then they're they're, they're like, "Where's my file?" It's because you have, when you at the end of your flight, you do have to press the button to uh, save the file, and then when the red light stops blinking, then you know it's safe to unplug the battery. 
So another problem that uh, some people have pointed out is that this antenna might not be that good. And the one that I've been, that's on the uh, Larva X is different from the one that comes on the Diamond DVX as you buy it in basically a standalone package like this. You get this monopole antenna. And it, depending on how this is cut, this length might be incorrect. That sometimes happens. Uh, you may want to swap this out with a different one, um, with a different micro FL connector or something with a dipole instead of a monopole. And I actually haven't had any issues. I've had, I've had four or five of these and all of them seem to be transmitting fine on 200 milliwatts. I can go pretty far on all of these. And there is this antenna here that you might want to try. This is from URUV. This is like a little clone or something. I forget. A little micro axi, I think. Micro FL connector. It's pretty tiny, as you can see here. And it'll probably fit fine. Doesn't weigh a lot. Uh, probably fit fine a lot of your whip style builds. So I'll put link this down below if you're looking for an alternative antenna instead of the one that comes with the Diamond VTX. I think this one should be fine. I did try it out. It, the video reception seems to be pretty good with that one. But that was the other thing that people were complaining about is the actual video transmission is not so great. The you know in my previous video, um, the Myth Mythbusters video, I did test the power. It does test at 200 milliwatts. And I tested more than one of them in case you guys are wondering and all of them were above 200 milliwatts so I think if you're having an antenna issue then you might want to switch to this antenna and that might clear up your you know, your video issues. Okay and one more thing that might help is if you are still having um, video reception issues you may want to just switch to a different channel. Um, this is like has nothing to do with actually this particular VTX but just VTX in general. You may find that it will get better reception on a different channel if something is interfering in your area or you just have weird RF issues in your particular place that you're flying at so always give that a try first um, you know if you're in the high end of the band go to the low end of the band or vice versa um, if you have a band scanner on your goggles then see like where there's you know, possibly other things transmitting and, and try and avoid those that parts of the band so you get better video transmission on your VTX Okay, so I think that's all I got for now. Um, if you got any questions, let me know. I'll link everything that I mentioned down in the description, so check that. And yeah, uh, hopefully this will help you guys out. I, other than, you know, other than the few people that I've seen um, commenting this is a bad product and uh, should be avoided, I haven't. I've heard pretty much positive things from most people about this, especially after the last video I made about this. So. Um, I know that there's been issues where people have crashed this and then it doesn't work. And that is going to be, well, I think that's going to be expected because this is using some super tiny components on here and uh, they can get knocked off in a crash. Um, obviously nothing's indestructible and I think that something like this that's highly integrated, we have a lot of really tiny components that can get knocked off like you can see right here. And these are all little SMD components, and they're probably the, some of the smallest ones out there. You know, they did that to, to fit all the stuff into this tiny board into a small form factor. So, yeah, if you do crash it, then yeah, you may have you may knock off some of these small capacitors or resistors, and then of course it'll stop functioning. Uh, I believe Happy Mod will still take care of you if you send it back to them. I think within I think it's 90 days. Um, yeah. I'm not 100% sure on that, but they, they do have a warranty on this even if you crash it. So you may want to talk to your retailer, whoever you bought it from. I think uh, Banggood or Race Day Quads are the only places I think sell this currently. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this video. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.